Caitlin McEnany just made a bold prediction in this Trump versus New York trial. Y'all got to check this out. Well, the defense attorneys for former President Donald Trump have just wrapped up their third day of cross-examination of the convicted liar, the star witness for the prosecution, Michael Cohen. And it has been another key big day earlier today. Cohen admitted to stealing from the Trump organization, or as my guest Matt Whitaker said last hour, embezzlement. Cohen also lied about Trump to Congress and secretly recorded their conversations. Now, we knew all of that. And now the defense is hoping all of these details, along with the new one of how he was embezzling cash from the Trump uh, organization, will leave jurors with a single conclusion. The prosecution star witness cannot be trusted. This is Outnumbered. I'm Harris Faulkner, here with my co-host Kaylee McEnany. Also with us today, Fox Business anchor and host of American Dream Home on Fox Business, Cheryl Cassoni. And Fox News contributor and editor-in-chief of The Federalist, Molly Hemingway. And 32nd Undersecretary of the Army, former Pennsylvania congressman and attorney, Patrick J. The question is, if you are convicted and you have lied under oath, number one, why are you not behind bars? Because that, I'm pretty sure, is a felony. Two, not only are you not arrested, you are a key witness, one of the most key and pivotal court cases of our time. Does that make any sense? Devastating stretch for the state star witness, Michael Cohen. He's their final witness. So they're going to end on this messy stew. And lawyers for Trump have been relentless going after his credibility. Well, you could do it with a play hammer. You wouldn't really have to hit it very hard. He lies as he breathes. Jurors could begin deliberating as soon as next week. And we heard from former President Trump just before he was entering the courtroom today. And he claimed the entire case is a political attack by the Biden DOJ. Let's watch. This all comes from the White House. It all comes from the DOJ and the White House. Take a look who's in the room. This all comes from the DOJ and the White House. It's an attack on Biden, who's mentally unfit. He's mentally unfit to be the president of this country. It's an attack on his political opponent. That's all it is. All of the things you see that you saw over the last four weeks, most of it should have never even been brought up. And then on top of that, there's no crime. And we go on day after day, and I can I tell Iowa, I'm sorry, I won't be able to make it. I tell New Hampshire, sorry, I won't be able to make it. I'm sitting in a nice box all day. Patrick, why did the district attorney spend all of this time and all of this money on this case? Why did he bring this case? Well, you know, you got to put the cards that you're dealt. I mean, the fact of the four But they weren't, they weren't dealt. Because everybody had passed, even his predecessor. Yeah. Everybody had passed on this in six years. Yeah. So why did he bring the case? I, I think he felt that even if you can't get a conviction, you got to bring it forward. And we'll see if he gets a conviction or not. But the fact is that the star witness, it was 12 years with Donald Trump as his vice president, Trump he was organization. stealing from the organization. I know, and he's a bad person. And that's why he's a convicted felon. Would you have brought this case? Probably not. No. Cheryl. Yeah, well, obviously, we've talked about it repeatedly that Alvin Bragg campaigned in this city uh, that he was going to go after Trump. He is going after Trump. Is it a mess? Yes. Did other jurisdictions reject this case to even take it on? Yes. And now we're saying why? I mean, you know, I don't know if you saw this this morning, but, uh, you know, Katie Cherkowski was on early on Fox and Friends, and she said, Look, the prosecution is now going to have to come back, which we know they are, mm -hmm. now that we've just wrapped up on the defense questioning, and they're going to have to rehab Michael Cohen. They're going to have to rehab their star witness. This is a mess from start to finish. My only caveat, though I have to add here, this is a New York judge, a New York courtroom, a New York jury. That's right. And I always Very ask liberal. myself every day when I start to watch the coverage of the, the brilliant ladies of Outnumbered and, of course, uh, the Faulkner focus, um, he could still be guilty because this is New York. Can you get a fair trial if you're Donald Trump in New York? I don't know. But Michael Cohen's a mess. Let's lean into the politics of this. Um, the president talked about being where he is in court instead of campaigning. He was not happy about that. That was just a, a few hours ago. Let's watch. I'm here instead of campaigning. As you know, I was supposed to be in a very different state this morning. And the judge actually decided to call it early. And yet, it looks like we're going to have a very big gap between days, and it's going to be determined right now in court. But we're here about an hour early today. I was supposed to be 
making a speech for political purposes. I'm not allowed to uh, have anything to do with politics because I'm sitting in a very freezing cold uh, courtroom for the last four weeks. It's very unfair. Wow. So he is really breaking it down, Molly, in terms of where he could be. But people want what they can't have. It's human nature. So the more he talks whenever he does, they're thirsty for it. You can literally argue that what they're doing is campaigning for Donald Trump. Because any American that sees what's happening here, anyone who sees this goes, hey, I want to vote for this guy because the powers that be hate him for some reason. So he must be doing something good. History, we've never experienced anything like this before. This is something we usually associate with the Soviet Union or Venezuela or a third world country where one political party is trying to imprison and bankrupt their top political opponent, uh, keeping him off the ballot, putting him through show trials, all sorts of trumped up charges, all for political gain. Now, it doesn't seem to actually be working that well for Democrats, but it is a show trial. I mean, there's no there's no actual crime. There's no evidence to support the crime. The star witness might be the criminal. worst witness we've ever seen in American history. <laughs> and yet, it's a, it, the whole point of a show trial is to secure a quick and easy conviction. That's why it's happening in New York with a very biased jury. And so, absolutely, the, I mean, it, maybe there's someone brave enough to withstand all of the hatred that Democrats have toward Trump to, to say this is not a conviction we're going to have. But that's a huge thing to ask I, of any I, I It imagine. takes one. It only takes one. Listen, it I, takes I, one juror. I, and then that's it. Right. And then you won't get a conviction. And it's a jury of your peers. But I wouldn't say it's a show trial. I wouldn't have brought it if I was a prosecutor. But I, listen, we were here. I was on the couch with them when we were going through jury selection. I mean, it was it was a fair trial all throughout. Mm -hmm. Now, we'll see what happens next there's week. There's no I, crime. I'm not saying, there's no yeah. victim. There's, a, there's no evidence the, to support it. The facts it. don't match the law. It was a dead misdemeanor, revived into a felony in a never-before-done way. The New York Times researched the cases. They found never in the history of New York have they brought charges right. on a federal election. So you guys can decide. Unprecedented. Is that fair? Is that not fair? Michael Cohen ended his testimony, uh, his cross-examination, rather. He was asked if he's working on a third book. He said yes. Hmm. He was asked if he's considering running for Congress. He said yes, because he has the best name recognition out there. He was asked whether he had a financial interest in the case. He said yes, sir, though he would not say whether or not he had interest in an innocent verdict or a guilty one. Michael Cohen, this is the jury. P put yourself in their shoes. This is the one piece of evidence. They are being asked to believe Michael Cohen. And human nature is going to have to, in their mind, square Michael Cohen 1.0 with Michael Cohen 2.0. Michael Cohen 1.0 is someone who called Hope Hicks and said, I miss Trump. Michael Cohen 1.0 is someone who said, look, I wouldn't say I was obsessed with Trump, but I definitely respect him greatly. Michael Cohen 1.0 is someone who said he'd take a bullet for the president. Something happens in 2018, it clicks. Michael Cohen 2.0, 200 podcast episodes. Not one does he not mention Trump. Michael Cohen 2.0, selling pictures of Trump behind bars in a, a T-shirt. Michael Cohen 2.0, paraphernalia that says convict 45, send him to the big house, not the White House. How do you square these two? How do you square these two? Not to mention all of his lying. This is someone with a motive, with an ax to grind, much like Stormy Daniels. And hopefully we have one juror out there who sees this guy. I, I have a lot of reasonable well, doubt when it comes to Michael Cohen. But I can tell you exactly what happened to him. The powers that be went to him and said, listen, you're going against Trump or we are going to release whatever. They had something against him and they leveraged him. You're going against Trump or else. Basically, exactly what happened with Michael Flynn. If you're not familiar with Michael Flynn, he was in Trump's cabinet and then he was fired within the first week. The very evil world that we're living in. And if you are against this establishment and, and these powers, you are going to go through hell. And that's what Donald Trump's going through right now. Just looking at this from the outside perspective, if I were to take one glance at this Michael Cohen, he just looks like a snake. He looks like a weasel. I feel like humans are born with the ability to tell if someone's an honorable person or not. And I just take one look at this guy and I'm like, ugh, uh, something irks me about him. It's not the same place it was even 16 months ago, let alone six weeks ago. It just isn't. And when you look at people who are suffering here, it's one of the reasons why, why Trump thinks he can win here. And we'll get into that a little bit later. But why New York is suddenly on the map for a politician atop the ticket who's on the right. And so really and truly, and, and I loved how you put that. I wrote that down. Michael Cohen 1.0, 2.0. 2.0 is also a guy who just said I stole from the Trump organization. Yes, there you go. So now the prosecution, Patrick, and I, I know you were a prosecutor. I don't know if even you could do this job. Their job isn't proving the case first. Their job is to prove their star witness is worth saving. As I said last hour, they got to fix the fixer. <laughs> 
Yeah, and he was a fixer for 12 years. And I think that's what I'm not a fan of 1.0 or 2.0 or if it's going to be 3.0 if he runs for Congress. He's a bad person, and he's been a bad person his whole life. He ran for office before here in New York as a borough councilman. Wait, 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 but, can I just but, say one thing? So sure. you think that Alvin Bragg wouldn't go after him for the felony that he just admitted to? I mean, maybe they had a really sweet immunity deal. But well, you already, think he's he already actually... got convicted of felonies before, and he had a three-year sentence. Michael Cohen. He said he stole from the organization. Right, and I think that's a different crime that he didn't already admit So they could to. go after him, but even Absolutely. you apparently don't right. think he will because they will, Bragg, because well, well, you just said listen. he could run for Congress. No, no. Listen, he's on the right side. He is going by with whatever they tell him to do. He's not fighting back. The second that he were to fight back against these people and say, you know what, what I'm doing is dishonorable and snaky, then they would go after him. They would throw the book at him and he would never see the light of day again. They would find anything to throw at him just to discourage anyone from speaking out against them. Just think how many famous millionaires and billionaires are scared to speak out against any of this tyrannical behavior because they see what's happening to Donald Trump. If I was a billionaire, a good chance I would never utter a word because there's no benefit. There's seemingly no benefit to standing up except for preserving America's values. And it seems that a lot of people would rather just have their money and wipe their hands of the affair and they're done. That's why you got to give a lot of credit for what Donald Trump has done because he's willing to put himself through the fire for us. And you really do have to respect that. Yeah, let me know your thoughts on this down below. Let me know. Do you think Michael Cohen is a reliable witness or should this man be behind bars? He's a crook. Yeah, let me know about that. And if you enjoyed, make sure to smash that like, comment, subscribe. And I wish you guys nothing but the best. Till next time.